good morning to all so today's topic that we are going to cover in this video is the functions of banking so far we have covered the topics like um, the formal definition of banking we have seen the terminologies like banker and customer that we have already seen so in this video particularly we are going to talk about functions of commercial bank so let me tell you uh, and give you a brief introduction about what we are going to cover in the functions and how the theoretical background of functions of commercial banking is looked upon right so in uh, some of the books you will find functions of banks and uh, the services rendered by the banks are almost same just changing the basic concepts with not writing as the accepting of the primary functions in some of the books it has been written as primary services and the secondary services so what i need to briefly inform you about this is that um, services are the facilities or the products or services which are being issued by the banks are also the functions which are performed by the banks right so both are the two sides of the coin with uh, smaller differences with uh, final differences right so uh, do not get confused about the uh, services and the function both are almost same just the con in into what context they have been looked upon that will change whatever the services are being provided by the commercial bank to its customers are actually forms the part and parcel of the functions of the commercial bank right so we are starting this topic of uh, functions of commercial bank Right. So this is the diagram. Uh, we can say this is the overview of the various categories, the various demarcation of how many functions are there, uh, into what categories they have been divided in the books and by the authors and the experts, right? So the functions of the commercial banks are basically divided into two major categories. One is the primary function, other is just secondary functions, right? In few of the books, in some of the books, it has been categorized as primary services and secondary services. So we are not going to go uh, as far as service aspects are concerned. So we are talking about functions. So primary functions and the secondary functions. And again, primary functions are divided into two major parts. One is the acceptance of deposits or accepting deposits. And second one is your granting loans and advances or generally granting advances right so if we go by another perspective so this is this diagram is given in majority of the books that's why i have taken it but some of the books also have different uh, demarcation of having the functions of the bank and they talk in the direction like primary function will remain same that functions of the banks are divided into primary and secondary but primary are accepting deposits and granting of loans and advances but secondary functions i have divided into two parts agency functions where bankers are acting as an agent on part of the customers on behalf of the customers and other than these three functions every function or services which is which are given by the banks or which are provided by the uh, commercial banks are coming under the category of utility functions but some authors has clearly defined it in different view different perspective and as per their perspective as per their discretion so agency function they are having under secondary functions and other than agency function there are other three functions first one is your general functions or utility functions so i am quoting it utility and agency functions are two major and third function which i have not mentioned here is given in some of the books uh, that is trustee as a function when the bankers are appointed as a trustee right so trustee as a function has been separately defined in some of the books and other than those three functions agency utility which are not covered in these functions are given the fourth name and that is talking about ancillary or subsidiary services so what we are going to do we are going to see uh, each one of them in detail in the next slide right so functions of commercial bank they are divided into two categories primary and secondary function first come to the main part that is what we mean by the primary function these functions are mandatory on the parts of the commercial bank to be performed we have already seen all other financial institutions or any financial institution which 
is not performing the financial primary function they cannot be termed as bank so in order to constitute a bank a bank must perform the primary function that is acceptance of deposits and granting of loans and advances in the words of um, sir john pegats when we were discussing the uh, relationship or the uh, definition of customer and banker we have already seen the differences between non banking financial corporations also known as nbfcs right and the banks so in order to constitute a world bank the organization must carry out the primary functions so if any of the primary function is not been carried out like checks the acceptance of deposits granting of loans and advances if either of the function is being carried out by any of the financial institution it cannot use the world bank it cannot be termed as a banking institution or banking organization or bank or banker therefore the primary functions are the mandatory function that every commercial bank need to perform it includes the two aspects the very first one is accepting deposits and uh, when we say accepting deposits so there are two major categories of accepting deposits so they are also known as mode of acceptance of deposits so how banks are accepting deposits uh, banks are uh, accepting with the help of demand deposits and time deposits so when we talk about demand deposits basically these are known as your current and savings accounts savings and current account are known as your demand deposits because there are uh, no time period no specific time period is there any customer or customers can withdraw they can deposit their amount within the banking hours right within the specified mode that's why they are known as the demand deposits right uh, again we have fixed deposits and recurring deposits also known as fds and rds they are known as time deposits because they have the fixed duration fixed time period to open uh, and to have the maturity time for fds it is from 7 days to 10 years and as far as rds are concerned minimum time period to book in to book rd and maximum time period is 6 months to uh, 10 years therefore they are known as the time deposits right so also we have the accounts like nre nro fcnr no frills account bs bd and these kind of accounts which are also termed as your which are also coming in the category of acceptance of deposits right accepting deposits so these are the various modes by which banks are accepting deposits from the general public so if i need to elaborate this particular function is that all the banks accept money on deposits and these deposits represent the major part of the financial strength and prepare the basis for other activities and other activities like other functions like general utility functions or your agency functions or your uh, second primary function that is ex granting of loans and advances so the ordinarily if we talk about a bank pays interest on uh, this kind of account as long as the money is retained by it as a deposit uh, on to, by the bank so fds and rds are uh, known as the higher uh, return they are giving higher returns than the savings account to their customers or to their depositors savings account generally have 4% as of now right uh, keeps on changing current account do not have any kind of interest which is given to the uh, to their depositor it is also known as business accounts right and savings account are meant for the safety purpose savings purpose and in order to earn interest on the deposits right so this all these things their restrictions their withdrawals their transaction day to day transaction cash and non cash transaction whatever the banks are performing Uh, what are the various products and services that are related with these type of um, functions or these accounts we'll be studying when we'll be studying the um, deposits account and loans account in detail in our next video right so uh, the first function is accepting of deposits with the help of the various modes are demand and time deposits second one is lending and investment so when we talk about lending and investment we are talking about loans and advances so generally there are differences between loans and advances but conceptually both can be termed as same because they are falling in the category or under the umbrella of 
lending and investment activities right so whatever the funds the banks are accepting they are going uh, for the performance of this uh, second primary function that is um, granting of loans and advances so we talk about home loans auto loans personal loans etc loan against property and uh, two wheeler loans four wheeler loans falling under the category of auto loans educational loans consumption loan these forms the part of the loans whereas the facilities and services like cash credit overdraft facility discounting of bills and etc these are forming the category of advances so there is a final line between the concept of loans and advances both are different things right so this acceptance of deposits and lending and investment or directly loaning and um, uh, loaning and indirectly through capital investment so banks are earning uh, interest from their customers and the difference between the interest which is received by the customers on lending and investment activities or lending activity loans and advances and the interest which is given to the depositors or account holders on their time and uh, demand deposits the term is known as spread right so this is one aspect that covers the primary function of the bank so one more thing i would like to add here is that both of these accepting deposits and lending and investment are the fundamental functions of the bank and it is the uh, primary function that every bank must constitute must offer must perform in order to constitute bank or banking activity or banker in itself right so if we talk about uh, the interest component we have already shared that um, the difference is known as the spread banks keeps a part of the total deposits with itself as cash reserves and lends the balances what it means actually that it is not the entire amount which has been accepted by the banker from the depositors they are not going to lend the entire amount to the loan seekers but banks are keeping a part of the total deposits so whatever amount they are accepting as deposits they are keeping part of the total deposits with itself as cash reserves and lends the balance amount and why it is so because we have also studied that repayable on demand as in when the customer of the savings account holder or the fund account holder the fds and rd account holders when they will be coming to the bank to get their amount back or in order to get the withdrawal of uh, whatever they have there in their own accounts so they need to maintain the liquidity position and these are termed by the terms cash reserves that every bank need to perform so in this way we are completing the primary function that are being performed by the banks as such right